Welcome back to part 1,984,762 of working on the old Forte. We got a lot done. We still got a lot to do, so let's get busy. Very short day today. Basically, all we're going to do is tear the transmission apart and figure out what parts I need, get them on order. And we might mount this on the, the engine stand right there and look at that drain plug. But here's the thing. It's been about 24 hours since I painted this. It's still got wet paint all over it. It's, it's pretty chilly in here. Uh, so we're going to have to fix a heater up and get it warmed up in here. Maybe this this here will start curing a little bit better. Um, remember I told you last week the fan broke on my heater over there. I thought I had one. Well, I do, but it's too big. That over yonder is eight and a quarter. This is nine inch, so I got one ordered. Hopefully it'll be here in a couple of days. So I decided, remember this in here, it would choke you to death. Well, I decided to tear it apart. Let's see what's going on. Well, I think I know. If you look down in there, well, right there, see see that red? That's red farm diesel. You don't wanna run that in one of these. So I need to empty that out, go to the store, get some regular highway diesel poured in here. And uh, let's see if this thing here will at least not choke us to death cause I'd rather not die from asphyxiation. Also, no, by the way, I pulled my phone out of my pocket a minute ago to start videoing. And well, as you can see, <laughs> My camera, well, it's just shattered. I don't, I ain't got a clue how that happened. No, sir, sure don't. So what I'm recording on right now is the, I believe it's the Note 10. Remember last summer, spring, sometime, half the touch screen quit working on it. Well, I had to drag it out so I could record till I can either buy a new phone or fix this one. Um, I'm telling you, fellas, MLS, it don't, it don't care. It don't, it don't take holidays off. It don't care nothing about your birthday. MLS never rest. Anyway, let's, let's get some good diesel in this thing right here. Well, she is running. <laughs> ain't putting out a lot of heat. No, sir, it sure ain't. Um, the smell ain't quite as bad, but it does still smell a little bit. Now, before you interweb experts go telling me there ain't no difference between farm diesel and highway diesel. Well, I ain't got a clue how old that diesel was. It could have been 10, 15, 20 years old. And uh, had, you know, higher sulfur and I don't know. Uh, and it could be that it was just old and that made it not burn completely and it stunk. Um, all I know is we're heating a little bit. It don't stink quite as bad. I am going to get a, a carbon monoxide monitor alarm in here. Probably go get that tomorrow. My ultimate goal, you know, I thought about building a, a, another fiery dragon for out here. I think what I'm going to do, right over in that corner, I'm going to see about getting one of those commercial, already made uh, oil burners and hang it right up there in that corner. We'll heat this place pretty good with it. Uh, I might even email some of the companies and just see if they'll sponsor maybe. I don't know. Uh, we got to have heat out here though, because it's a little chilly. Anyways, I'm gonna clear this table off, put the transmission up here, we'll go to tearing it apart. Well, I got her set on the table. You'll have to excuse the noise from the heater. It's cold and it's about 35 degrees outside. I got to have some heat. Anyway, if you've been with me for a while, you might remember this transmission and the one that's in dude dude has an uh muncie m20 this is a borg warner super t10 uh i know that because of the date on it 5 right there depending on who you read 72 3 4 5 is when they came out with the super t10s uh the the earlier t10s they were kind of weak and then they finally came out with the super t10 a little stronger uh, some claim that they're, you know, comparable to a Muncie's for strength. I don't know. This old car here is a cruiser. We might do a burnout every once in a while, but it ain't going to be making enough power to break this for now anyway. You know, we may put a different motor in it later on. Anyway, this is going to do for now just to get her on the road. That's what this is all about, get her back on the road. Uh, if you remember, I, the, I don't know where this transmission came from, the one in Dude. I ain't got a clue. I know they were sitting on the shelf over at mama's when i was a kid i fooled with them and this one here needed the input shaft and a fella i used to work with um 
had a whole bunch of transmissions. Well, if you've seen the back of the old 51 pickup in the barn, that's where all of them are. I had to buy a whole truckload of parts to get this input shaft right here. That's what I needed. So that's got to go in here, but we're missing some parts. Got to take this apart and see what we need. Plus, I want to see what gear is on the speedometer. You got to know that to be able to calibrate your speedometer. Anyway, let's get this thing torn apart. All right, first thing we got to do, pull the side cover off. Of course, when I put this together when I was a wee child, I didn't use no gas kits because I knew I had to take it back apart and put that uh, input shaft in. These forks, I don't think it matters which way they go, but I ain't real sure. Now, y'all can't see it, but I think all I'm gonna need is the synchronizer ring, needle bearings for the inside of the input shaft. I think there's a spacer. I believe that's all I'm gonna need, yes sir. But the input shaft comes in this way, so we gotta pull this all apart. So let me pull this off firstly, then we'll stand it up. I thought I was going to have to pull that secondary shaft out, but I don't have to. Uh, now this has a broke tooth on one of these gears. But this in here looks okay. I mean, it's got wear in it. I ain't going to lie to you about that. But I think it'll do just fine and dandy for what we're doing. Yes, sir. So we got us an input shaft now. I'm going to probably get new bearings and uh, at least one for that. And then we'll have to see what all this other stuff looks like. I think it's probably just kind of dandily. Yeah, I think we're just gonna put her together like it is. I need to get this off though, because I want to see uh, what gear I got on that speedometer. I got to figure out how this comes apart though. shift fork in there you got to push it back with a screwdriver this will come off all right there is the speedo gear it's green i know some of them use color and some of them you have to count slots in the side but it's hard to count the 
actual teeth. I'll figure out what I got and then figure out what I am going to need on this car and then we'll buy accordingly. But it looks like all I need for the input shaft is the roller bearing. It goes just like that right there. There's a roller bearing that goes inside of here, rides on this. And uh, the uh, synchronizer ring that go here. I think there's a spacer here. And I believe that's all I need. We'll get maybe a bearing. I might clean that up. See what, because it's kind of gunky looking. If I think it'll be all right, we'll use it. If not, I'll buy a new bearing there. But I'm not tearing this apart. It is what it is. So now that we know what we got here, need to order. I'll go ahead and order that. Get it here. Got the motor on the stand. And first thing we're going to do is try to fix this Earl leak. I don't know. I'm assuming it was the seal on this drain plug. But there may be a hole right here. Let's pull this off. I could have swore I put a new seal on this, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. Pull it off. Look at it. It's, it's sort of creased right there, right below the drain plug. That may be what's leaking, but let me pull this off. We'll look at that wisher, and then we'll maybe go get a new one tomorrow and see if I don't fix it or not. Here's the drain plug and here's the whoosher. I mean, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Well, wait a minute, I do too. There's a little something or another right there. That might be the issue. Tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get a new seal for tomorrow. This, I believe, is a, a plug, oversized plug for, you know, like if you strip threads, see how it's made on the end? It'll cut new threads to a little bit bigger size. I believe that's what that is. Anyway, we'll get us a new seal. And I got her wiped down. And you can, I don't know if y'all can see, but it looks like it's been mashed flat right here. And there's a crease and a sharp edge actually right there. That could be where it's leaking. Uh, we'll get a new seal, put that plug in there, flip this back upright. If it still drips, then I've got a chrome oil pan in the house. We might put that on there. Also, if you remember, freeze plugs leaking. I'm going to replace all freeze plugs. Oil filter adapter. It was leaking just a little bit, so we got to look at it. Then we're going to paint her. Um, I, I'm thinking about going with, you know, Chevrolet orange. I think it'll look good against that black. But for now, that little fella over there, it's getting a little fumey in here. I'm going to shut her down. I think tomorrow I might go to Lowe's or somewhere, see if I can, I can buy a new heater. You know, 80 to 100,000 BTU should be plenty. Cause this now will be three or four days before I get the fan for that. And I'm not working out here in the cold, no sir. Anyway, like I said, it's a short day. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Till's the next day. Well, it's actually a couple of days later. I did absolutely nothing on the car. I did absolutely nothing on the motor. I will tell you what we did do though. Look at there. Oh yeah, got the metal up on that wall. Handy dandy assistant come over yesterday evening. We finished that up. Uh, all we like is this front wall. I ain't worried about it because it's not hindering me. That one was. So I'm going to spend a couple of hours getting this straightened back out. Then we'll get back to work on this fella right here. And I'll tell you what we're going to do today. Hopefully we'll get it accomplished today anyway. But let me get this mess here straightened up first because this has been driving me crazy. Oh, yeah. What y'all think about this right here? Got her cleaned. I'm glad to get this done. Yes, sir. Uh, I got enough room to get another vehicle in here now. That's pretty awesome. I still got a lot of junk, a lot of partages. That's what all this is, is parts. Um, I'm going to put me up a speed rack right here. That's where them parts are going to go. I'm going to try to get one you know, all the way up to the top of the ceiling. i talk more about that on the second channel. Uh, be watching for that video. But the reason my S10 is in here is yesterday I went walking meandering frolicking if you will through the woods where lockjaw the farm lockjaw came from uh we got three vehicles over there we got to get home probably next spring i was also walking around looking for other parts we can use on different vehicles i didn't find those but i tell you what it did bring back memories of when i was a kid walking through an actual junkyard with you know vehicles from the 50s 60s 70s and you could actually use parts off of them on, you know, other vehicles. Now they're just too new in these junkyards. I'd give anything if I lived around an old junkyard, but I don't. Anyway, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. I didn't find what I was looking for, but I got 
I got four sets of Chevrolet heads. I sure do. These are, I'm sure, just old junk small heads. But if we ever need a set of heads to put a motor together real quick, I got plenty of heads. I need to find me some crankshafts. There's two blocks over there, too. They have been in the weather for probably as old as I am. Maybe not that long, but they've been out there a while. I'm going to get them. They'll be okay. We'll have to bore them out and deck the block probably, but I think they'll be just fine and dandily. I'll get them, bring them home pretty soon. Found a power steering pump. I just grabbed it just because. Uh, I thought I'd found me some Ford truck wheels. No, sir. Those are five on five. We'll keep them, though. Uh, we'll be able to use them on something one of these days. <laughs> he gave me a great big old pile of grinding wheels. Yes, sir. There's a bunch of small ones, a bunch of cutoff wheels. That'll last me a little while. Got some cutoff wheels for the big chop saw too. So that's good. I gotta get this unloaded. Then I gotta run to the store, get some paint for that. Uh, freeze plugs. I ain't sure that we're gonna get to work on this tonight cause I got some other stuff I need to do. But I just thought I'd show y'all what I did yesterday along with you know putting this tin up. Anyway. Let me get this unloaded, run to the store. Well, I'm back from Ireland. I got me some paint. Well, I left it in the truck. I'll have to go get it. Um, they didn't, well, they couldn't find the freeze plugs. According to the website, um, they had brass and steel, you know, a whole set. Well, them two fellers there, I had never seen them before, so I guess they're new. And they couldn't find them, so I'll probably go back in the morning and uh, see if they can find them. Um, so we'll, we'll probably wait till tomorrow to work on this, but look at here. Guess what's in this box right here? Well, it's going to be a fan just like this one, except for that little hub ain't going to be broke off of it. I got that in two days. I've never gotten anything that fast from eBay. No, sir. Sure ain't. Also look at this big old tip of tar gauge. I got, I'm going to hang it up probably right up there. It's, I got this uh, yesterday. It's been 10 degrees cooler in here than outside, so my insulation, it is working. Just not how I want it to. Anyway, what I'm going to do firstly, we're going to put this fan on that heater over there, get it warmed up here a little bit. And then I got to pull my S10 in here, change the Earl, and uh, I got a bad O2 Centrum. We'll change that out. And then that's probably all I'm going to do. We'll, we'll hit this tomorrow. Why don't y'all look at this right here? Well, here's my new fan, firstly. Got to put it on. Here's the old one. There's a little hub that, you know, broke off. I was going to try to weld it back together, but it's all aluminum. I don't have a TIG, so I might keep it, though. If I ever get a TIG, I'll weld it back. But uh, look here. I bought parts from eBay for, I don't know, 20-plus years, probably longer than that. I have never, ever gotten a bag of candy bars when I ordered something. <laughs> that's, that's pretty neat. I'll eat them here in a minute. Let's go put this on and get it warmed up in here a little bit. Well, it's the next day again and again and again. I don't know. It's so loud in here because it's raining. I got to holler so y'all can hear me. <laughs> um, upon further inspection, I just wanted to show y'all this Earl pan. Remember how I thought it might be busted right there at the crease? Well, look at there. Well, let me get this light where you can see it. See that hole right there? Oh, yeah. Right here. She's cracked. So I'm going to very delicately weld that. Hopefully I don't catch the inside of the oil pan on fire. I just cleaned that real good with a uh, carb cleaner to get all the earls off of it. So let me weld that up real quick and then we'll go to putting the freeze plugs in and then I got to do some cleaning before we can paint it. And well, I got to remove accessories and whatnot. Woohoo! Well, I done set it on fire inside there. Y'all hear that whoof? Y'all probably saw it. I'll have to look at the video and see what that looked like. That sounded horrendous though. Well, I got that crack welded up. Then I put my wrench on the uh, Drain plug, tighten it up. Well, it's tripped out. <laughs> it sure did. So what we're going to do, I didn't want to do this because it sealed up good. It didn't leak nowhere when we was run testing it and breaking it in. That's why I don't want to pull it off, but we're going to have to. I'm going to pull that off, throw it in the garbage. And uh, I ain't got one. You know, I told you I might have a chrome one. No, sir, sure don't. 
Um, don't know where it went. I got the chrome valve covers and the chrome timing chain cover. Used to have a oil pan. I don't anymore. Uh, the oil pan that come off of that motor, you know, the 283 that used to be in here, it's over there. Let me go get it and see what it looks like, but it seemed like it was really, really rusty on the inside. Maybe it'll work. If not, I'll have to buy one. That oil pan over yonder, she's in pretty rough shape. I don't want to use it. It's really rusty. I mean, big flakes on the inside. Plus, it needs a lot of cleanup. Y'all know me. I hate cleaning stuff just like I hate painting and body work. I just I hate it. So, I'll get on the interwebs tonight. I'll find me another Earl pan. Um, might even get a chrome. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. I might, though, have a 283 oil pan over at Mama's on the shelf. I'll go look here in a little while. We might just use that one. Anyway, what we got to do now, freeze plugs. Got one here, one here, two in the back. We won't get them till after we get it off the engine stand. Got two up front here that we got to get. I got to pull this pulley off, water pump, power steering, alternator brackets and stuff so I can paint everything in there. Going to leave these valve covers and this intake on for now once we get it painted and probably wait till we get it in the car to change valve covers and the three deuce manifold that is going to stay natural looking i got to clean it up but i don't want to paint it uh let me get all this stuff off and then we'll go to cleaning this thing and freeze plugs and getting it ready to paint If you don't know how to get freeze plugs out, well, let me show you real quick, like. I like to get on the edge here and turn them, flip them, but you can't always do that. That one ain't gonna work, so sometimes you gotta poke a hole in them and get you some kind of utensil in there. Well, I just broke my, broke my dad blame punch. Well, that ain't worth crap. Let me get a different one. Now, as I was saying before we were really interrupted by a broken punch, you gotta get it knocked out of the hole some kind of way. These are being stubborn a little bit. All right, there it goes. Now, you gotta get you something. You gotta get it turned where one side is coming out just like that right there. Grab her with them in chanty locks. Bring it her turned. It should just pull right on out. Just like that right there. Let me do the rest of them. Then we'll go to cleaning her up, getting it ready for paint. Got all the freeze plugs out. Let me tell you, it's pretty doggone nasty down in there. Yes, sir. Really nasty. So I'm going to try to flush that water jacket out best I can. Then we'll go to cleaning it up. I mean, that's... That's a really lovely color. That's what you want to see coming out of your uh, water jacket. It sure is. There's some of the stuff I got out of it. It's just so much in the bottom of the water jacket around the cylinders. It's just compacted in there. I can't get it out. But that's going to have to do. I think it'll be okay. Hopefully it won't run hot. Uh, I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to go to hitting this with purple pyre because it's really oily. And I'm dreading that because, well, y'all know I hate cleaning. <laughs> anyway, I got to get it done. Motor is clean as I'm going to get it. This is about a $2.50 paint job. <laughs> it ain't going to be all that great. It, we may not get to paint it tonight because it's still really wet. I done blew it off two or three times. May just let it sit here and dry overnight. 
I do have my small parts over here ready. Got my dampener, motor mount, motor mount, and fan. And then the water pump's over on the table. I already got the first coat on the uh, dampener here. Going with gloss black on this stuff here. Don't look too bad. Once I get done with it, I'll move it and then bring one of these over here, a little assembly line. Anyway, let me get this painted. Well, I got all these small parts painted. They ain't too bad. No, sir. They look pretty doggone good. Uh, I'm going to wait on the water pump when I paint this because it's going to be orange. Now what we got to do is flip this thing on its side a little bit, and i got to put some freeze plugs in it. Let me show you how you do that. Here's how I do them anyway. Uh, I'll take a little sanding paper. Just go around that edge and clean it up a little bit. Just like that right there. Just make sure there ain't no rust or crapola. Then you want to clean them up with a rag. After you get her cleaned up, take one of your freeze plugs. I put a little bit of RT and V all the way around it. Just like it's right here. Be sure you smear it all over yourself too because that's, well, that's just how you do it. Then... You get you a socket that just barely fits inside of it. Put her in there just like that. Try to keep it square with a hole. I like to take mine just a little bit below the top surface and I got her a little crooked so I got to hit over here a little bit. That's just a wee bit below the surface. That's pretty doggone good. Let me do the rest of them. What I mean by a wee bit below the surface is this surface here. See how she's countersunk basically just a little bit? Oh yeah. Let me get the rest of them done. Freeze plugs are in. Oh yeah. Glad to get that done. Uh, we'll get these two back ones after I pull it off the stand here. The motor is still wet in spots and I got to looking at this side of the block under the light where I could see, and she's still pretty greasy. Uh, it needs to be cleaned up a little more. I ain't doing it tonight. It's getting late. Fool you on, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm going to go in the house, try to find an Earl pan, get it ordered. We'll, uh, we'll finish this up tomorrow, hopefully. See y'all later. Well, we are back at it. But let me tell you about my day so far. I've told y'all about MLS, right? Well, I come out here. It's like 45 degrees outside, so it's about 35 in here. Well, I fired the old heater up, and it just sat there and sat there, wouldn't light. I, you know, I thought sometimes it has trouble siphoning out fuel. So I let it run for a minute or so. Well, I finally saw raw fuel coming out the end of it. I thought, well, I think we probably ought to shut her down and see what's going on. So I did. Took the top off of it there. I wanted to see the spark plug, see if it was uh, sparking. Well, took the cover off. Plugged it in, she fired right up. So I put the cover back on. Well, it had to burn all this raw fuel out here on the end. It smoked this shop up. I couldn't hardly see nothing. So as you can see, I opened up both of my bay doors and uh, hoping the smoke would roll out of here. Well, 10 minutes later, it was still pretty smoky. So I fired the big fan up here, hoping to push some of it out. It did. But let me tell you, I don't know if there's all kind of insulation particles in there or what, but the sun shining through and them insulation particles glittering everywhere, I thought, my goodness gracious, there's going to be a layer of dust all over everything. Anyway, that's turned off. The glitter's gone. The smoke is gone. Fix shut them doors. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get this painted. Finally got it warmed up in there. It's about 60, 62 degrees. That's about right with the coat on. Um, been taping up holes and doing a little more cleaning. She's about as prepped as she's going to be, fellas. Let me tell you, this motor is wore out. Let me show you. I pulled the plugs out because I didn't want to paint them. And she likes the Earls. Oh, yeah. Um, see? Well, there's got some ash on it already. 
But see how shiny it is? That ain't gasoline, no sir, that's Earl's. Um, she's gonna be an Earl burner. Uh, hopefully though, you know, we can probably burn some of that off every time we kick her down and go whom pow. But uh, she's gonna need a motor pretty soon. But for now, we're gonna paint this in right here. Better show enough orange. That is quite the orangey motor. Yes, sir, it sure is. Glad to get that done. It don't look too bad. Um, you might be wondering, why didn't you paint the Earl pan? Well, remember this and we had issues, so I went over to Mama's. I found three over there. One of them, it had an extra drain plug, so I didn't want it. Uh, the other two, they were pretty smashed on the bottom, so I said, fooey on it. I got on the old Amazon website, ordered me one. It won't be here till Wednesday, so we won't get to put it on in this video. It's, is it chrome? I don't remember. That's how bad my memory is. I think it's chrome. Uh, also, transmission parts, they should be here tonight. I ordered an aluminum bell housing. Because this one over here, well, it's got places broken. Well, I just decided I ain't going to use it. So that means our... Uh, bracket for our slave cylinder for the clutch we'll have to modify it for that aluminium bell housing seemed like there's something else coming for it i don't remember what it is so anyway whilst this dries i'm not well i don't know when i'm gonna put the valve covers and in, intake on it i gotta clean this intake up because it's pretty nasty see how dull it is gotta clean it up i don't know when we'll put it on anyway whilst that dries and we wait on other parts we're gonna we're gonna fix the steering. I finally figured out how I want to do it. So let me get all this took apart, and I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna do it. All right, here is how we're gonna fix this here steering situation. If you remember, my tie rod ends would hit this area here. Plus, they rub these boots. Uh, I was gonna space this out more, but these bolts are already three and a quarter inches long. I don't want any longer bolts. I don't want them that long, but I ain't really got a lot of choice. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna remove this long bar, keep this spacer. And I got, this here is uh, three quarter by inch and a quarter. Well, I got inch and a quarter square, as you can see here. It's going into place of this long one, be right here. And uh, um, the tie rod that I have decided to use is what I decided to use a month or two ago and then decided not to and then decided to again. It comes off or goes on a 96 Trans Am. Um, the fourth gen Camaro Trans Am is what that fits. Anyway, um, this inch and a quarter bar is gonna go here where this one is. And then these, well, let me set it up here like it's gonna be, sorta, it ain't gonna be there, but you get the idea. It'd be right there. And then the tie rod, these tie rod ends See the end there? It screws into the end of this bar. Like it's right here. Well, if you see, well, oops. If you see my tie rod, well, let me get over here and get you a better shot of that. All right, here is the outer tie rod. There's the adjuster. The outer tie rod from here out. Well, this tie rod here is gonna go approximately, well, I keep dropping things. Hang on just a minute. It's gonna go about right there. Well, as you can see, it's a little bit too long. So what we're going to have to do, cut her off right in here somewhere. i got to put new threads on it. Then i got to make a custom adjuster because that in there ain't going to work. It's a different thread than that. So that's how we're going to fix it. You'll understand it more as we go along and you know, once I get it put together. For right now, I want to get this piece off, get the holes drilled in my new piece, and then get the holes drilled and tapped in the end here. And... Let me show you this. Where is that piece of bar? It's right here. I found it. I found it. Um, you know, it is half inch thicker than this. I don't want to go with any longer bolts. So we're going to counter bore this fella right here. So then bolt heads will go down in there. And I don't have to have longer bolts. That's what we're going to do. So let's get busy working on it. We'll grind this 
replacer off of here because we got to have it. Kaplika plow, kaplika plow. Oh, look at there. She come right on. Here's what we gotta do now. I gotta get my spacer centered on this here other piece. We got four inches there. We got four and three eighths. So I need to go this way, about like that. What is that, four and a quarter? Bow and three sixteens. That's probably going to do. Let me check her one more time. Bow and three sixteens. Bow and three sixteens. That's where she needs to go. Just like that right there. We're going to clamp a lamper. Ah yeah. Now check her one more time. I do believe we're good, so let me go tack this to this real quick, like. Now what we got to do is drill these holes all the way through. I'm going to use this drill bit. You, you know, you normally don't drill a hole this big starting out this big. I'm going to use this feller here just to spot it, make that, you know, my center punch mark, and then I'll get a smaller drill bit and we'll drill her out. Now, I will get me a smaller drill and we'll drill all the way through. Now we use the drill bit that I used to make my punch mark. Let's take it over here to the car, make sure these, these line up. They should, but let's just make sure. We got a little bit of threads there hanging on. Oh yeah. That's pretty doggone good. Now that we got that done, we got to go to mama's, get on the milling machine because I got to square these ends up. You know, you got tie rod ends that's going to screw into here. I want that good and flat. As you can see, it's got saw marks. Plus, it's probably not square with the sides. So let's go over and get that done. All right, I got it squared up with my head here. I put my dial indicator right here on this flat surface and run it along here. It's within a thousandth that length there. It's that's more than good enough for what we do around here. Backyard butchery, I do, yeah. That's excellent. Um, I ain't worried about this way because this table, it's so wore out. Well, the whole meal's wore out. But this is so heavy that when it gets over here, it'll flop this way. You take it that way, it'll flop that way. And it's not a lot, just a few thousands, but it's enough that... Well, you ain't gonna do much precision work on this thing right here. It's just wore out, I'm telling you. You have to know how to run it. Anyway, all I wanna do, clean both these ends up, uh, just take enough off to get the saw marks and make sure we're good and square.
What do that look like? No, we still got saw marks, I believe. Oh yeah, I think that'll do. Let me get this other end over here real quick. All right, I got it chucked up in the lathe. You might be wondering, well, why are you doing it on the lathe instead of a drill press or the mill? Well, this is so long, I don't have a way to hold it vertically and drill it. So I thought, let me throw the forge jaw on the lathe. We'll put it in there and we'll drill the holes. That's what we're gonna do. Hopefully it don't go wild, because I got her sticking out pretty fur. Maybe we can manage to do it, we'll just have to see. All right, I got her center drilled, and this is the part that's gonna screw in there. But you can see it ain't very long, it's about 550 by thousands long. But I don't have a bottoming tap, I just got a regular old, whatever you call it, tap. So we need to go deeper than what this is, so I can run that tap on in there and make sure I get full thread. So. I'm gonna go about an inch deep. I think that ought to be A and okay. Uh, what do I do with this here? You ain't got a clue. Well, if I need something to tell the cat, what did I do with that? <laughs> I lost my chuck key. This just beats all I've ever seen. Oh, I found it, I found it. Now, this thing is 18 mamas by one and a half thread. And I got to figure out what kind of drill bit, what size drill bit I need. M18 by one and a half. 649 by thousandths. Let me see if I can't find one close to that. Final drill bit, 21 30 seconds. Uh, it's supposed to be a 16 and a half millimeter, but I don't own any millimeter drills. So this one right here will have to do. I forgot this thing jumps out of the back gear. You have to bungee cord it down. So let me do that real quick, Mac. I guess I need to clean her out. I didn't think about that either. I gotta clean the shavings out real quick. Watch your eyes. All right, let me see if I can get this started in there again and go a little deeper. Hopefully I can. Ooh. We'll call her good right there. All 
I always forget to do this before I uh, thread it. Watch your eyes. All right, let's see how that does. Just like a glove. See if I got enough threads in the hole. No, sir. We need to go just a wee bit. I mean, just a wee bit further, it looks like. It didn't like, but maybe a thread. That's kind of odd. All right, let's see if that takes care of it. Well, there's something wrong with this then, because it's going exactly the same amount. This is very interesting. Huh. Shouldn't be no shoulder on that. Well, this is weird. I don't know what to do here. The only thing I know to do is put a, a thin whoosher on it, or i tell you what we can do. Just in case there is a shoulder here, I'm going to countersink this a little bit more. Alright, let's try that. Yes, sir. It must have been a little shoulder down there. Well, that's got it. All right, one end down. Let me do the other one, and then I'll be back. Well, there is the second one done. So let's take her back to the house, put it on the car, and see what we got. Well, I got it installed, with the exception of y'all didn't remind me to counter bore these holes for these bolt heads. We'll have to do that tomorrow. But there's one tie rod in, and there's one tie rod right there. Let me show you over here what we got to do next. Here's the end of the new tie rod. And then here's the adjuster. We're gonna cut her off about right there because I don't know if y'all can see it or not. This is a hex. So we're gonna cut her off about right there. And that's put it's about it's about where that one used to be. Then we gotta thread that and make us an adjuster. But uh, it's late, so we'll do that tomorrow. Counterbore those holes, but let me show you what we got in the mail. Oh yeah, look at this pretty thing right here. Got my bell housing. It came with the uh, clutch fork, throw out bearing, pivot ball, and a boot for that hole. And then there's the dust cover. What else? Oh, my transmission part came in. That's a gasket set right there. And then my uh, synchronizer ring, and then that's what they call a small parts kit. It had everything I need in it. Then I got my float ball for the fiery dragon. I gotta put that in tomorrow. Anyway. Uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow and hopefully we'll be done with this uh, steering. All right, I got everything tore apart. I got my measurements I need. Here's the outer tie rod end. Here's my inner tie rod end. And I've got some one inch square. And this is what we're gonna make the adjusters out of. I would like to have round and you just machine some flats on it. And if there's any over at Mama's, that's what I'll use. But as of right now, we're gonna use this square um, to keep the same thread engagement as the old ones here. Uh, my new adjuster needs to be six inches long. And here is the issue. The outer tie rod in, which is an inner for an S10. You know, it's left-hand thread. Well, it's 11 16 18, oddball size. Nobody in town has a tap, and I completely forgot to even, you know, think about getting one. Uh, just order one off of Amazon. We'll be here for three days, so we can't finish this, um, this video. We, we're, about to run into trouble, fellas. We're waiting on a lot of different parts. Hopefully I can, you know, figure out enough stuff to keep keep it going. Anyway, let's head over there and start machining on this. I gotta cut these off about right here, first thing. And then we'll head over and chuck it up in the lathe and do the same thing there that we did over here last night. All right, I got my bar, thing of a bob set up on the mill, fixing the counter bore these holes. Remember, we gotta take it down about a half inch because that's what we added with this thicker bar. Well, as you can see, I've already bored it some. Uh, don't ask me why, it's just, I think I've got it set up right now. Uh, for those of you who know milling, this roughing end mill is the biggest mill I got. It's an inch, it needs to be a little bit bigger, but that's the biggest I got. 
So it's gonna have to do. Anyway, let's see if we can't bore this out. All right, let's stick our bolt down in there and then put a socket around it to make sure that it'll fit. Well, here is the deal. There's my bolt. There's my counter bore. We're just slightly off center. I don't know how in the world I got off that far. That's something ain't right there, but my socket won't fit. If I could have gotten dead center, we'd have been all right. Um, I really don't know how I got off that far. I don't have the proper tools to find center, but I'm pretty sure what I had, it should have done better than that. The old me, I'm telling y'all, it's wore out. It, it could have shifted. I don't know. Um, I think what we're going to do for this hole anyway is need to take a little bit off this side here. So I'm going to put it back over there. We're going to run the mill that way and take some out there. And then this here, I'm going to try to get it lined up just a little bit better. All right, let me fire this thing up. And we're going to bring the part this way. And cut that side out just a wee little bit. Hopefully that'll do it. All right, let me see what that does real quick. All right, let's see if we did any better. Oh yeah, she fits. And got a little room to spare right there. I don't think an impact socket would fit, but as long as I got a socket that will fit, that's all that matters. I'm gonna try to line up on that a little bit. Matter of fact, I'll show y'all, I'll take y'all over and show y'all how I'm having to do it because I don't have the proper tooling. Anyway, let's get over and get this other one done. All right, let me show y'all real quickly how I have to find center. It's, it's the only thing I can do right now because I don't have any other tools to do it with. This is a center punch. It fits in that hole pretty snug, but it's a non-standard size as far as collets go. So I had to wrap paper towel around the end of it and stick it up in the collet to keep it from just falling out basically. Well, then you stick it up in here and then you put this piece, you know, tighten up on the collet. Well, watch this right here. It can still move around quite a bit and that's what got me off center. Um, Best I can do, fellas, I ain't got a, you know, full machine shop. This is backyard butchery. <laughs> How many times I got to tell you all that? Um, this hole is not centered on here because, you know, the drill press we use to drill them out with. Well, the table probably ain't square with the head. It's just, well, it's old machinery, fellas, and this you just have to learn how to use it. Um, also, I'm sure some of y'all will ask me, why you got it hanging off the vise? Why don't you got it in the center? Well, fellas, I got two pieces of metal. It's welded and it won't work. This is how I have to do it. Anyway, uh, enough of that. Let me put this in here. See if I can't find center a little bit better. And if I don't, well, we'll do that same trick again. It might be hard for y'all to see. Let me get me a little pointer. Here's my hole. You see this little edge right here? A little lip. It's not being cut. See it right there? That's because... Here's my cutter I'm using. Uh, see how the center is open? It don't cut. And then this one here does. Uh, but, you know, this one ain't big enough diameter. What I'm going to have to do, well, this firstly tells me I am not center. We're just like we were on the other one. What I'm going to have to do, take this one, run it down, cut the middle, and then take this one, run it down and cut the outside. So let me do that real quick. This is, this backyard butchery, fellas, this is what you got to do. I already got my depth gauge all set, so let's cut the center out firstly. Alright, now let me switch to the bigger, and we'll do the outside part. Alright, let's do the outside now. Alright, let's check her out. Let's check it out and see how bad it is. I think it's pretty bad. Well, you can tell from there. Yep. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. Socket does not fit. Well, let me go take some off of this side over here. All right, let's 
check it out again. Will it fit this time? Oh yeah, look at there. Got room to spare over here too. All right, now that we got that done and good in backyard butchery, <laughs> let me go clean the milling machine up and we'll we'll get over here on the lathe and do what we got to do over there. All right, now we got to make our adjusters. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. It's just a bunch of drilling, basically. So let me get this side drilled out for um, uh, 14 by one and a half millimetry. The other side's got to be 11 sixteenths, 18. <laughs> Well, this end is going to be the 11 sixteenths end because, you know, I was going to do the 14 millimeter firstly. Well, I used the wrong drill bit. It went too big for the 14 millimeter. So I had to take it on out for the 11 sixteenths. Today's not been a good day for me. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not machining very well. And that little fella there is on fire. Let her cool down and we'll swap it. We'll do the other end for the 14 millimeter. All right, this is a 475 thousandths drill bit, roughly. It needs to be 492 for a 14 by one and a half. Let's see if this, you know, it's gonna have some wobble. Hopefully it'll be about right when we get done. What do we has? We has 490. Oh yeah, pretty much dead on. That'll work for the millimeter, so let me go ahead and run a tap in it. We do have a dilemma. This is only two and five eighths, and we need to go three inches deep. I'm not sure what we're gonna do just yet. Um, I might can do some of it by hand. We'll just have to see how it goes. Give her some Earl. Well, you aggravating sucker, you. Huh. What in the world am I going to do here? Was it slipping like crazy? Ooh. I wonder if that tap is dull. It very well could be. Let's see if I can't get it on one of the flats on the end of that tap there. This this has not been a good day. I'm just gonna tell you right now. I heard something pop. We most likely broke that tap. I don't know what the pop was, but the, the tap didn't break, so. I ain't got a clue. Um, I mean, way but two thousands under what we're supposed to be. I don't, I don't see that causing the issue. Let me try it again. Back gear keeps jumping out. I guess I'm just gonna have to hold it by hand and hope and pray we don't break nothing. I believe if we keep on, we're gonna break that tap off in there, pretty sure. Um, well, 
I don't know what I'm gonna do, fellas. This they don't want to tap at all. Yeah, she's pretty tight. If I gotta do three inches by hand, we're gonna be here a while. I reckon this is what I'll do, just to keep from, you know, breaking that tap off in there. I'll be back in about 30 minutes, probably. Well, I'm almost there. This has not been fun, but got to be done. Oh, yeah. We ain't deep enough either, I don't think so. I ain't real sure what I'm going to do about that. All right, let me get this thing out of here. And then I got to run a die over the tie rod end. All right, here we go. Slipping in the chuck. I swear, if it ain't one thing, something else all the dead brain time. All right, I got everything cleaned up. That is not the best threads. It's not grade A threads, no sir. But we're gonna have to do. Let's see if she'll fit. Seems to be. Oh yeah. Well, spoke too soon. She got a little tight right there. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna end this video because this this has not been a good day for me. As far as machining, it really hadn't. I don't know what's going on. Here's the deal. Today it's been a disaster. Pretty much, yes sir. <laughs> everything I have touched. I've screwed up. Uh, let me let me show you what I figured out. Well, here is what I cut off of the uh, tie rod ends. And, you know, they came with a, a nut. Well, I put the nut on the threads that we made. And it spins just fine and dandily. It's actually too loose. I don't know if y'all can see that right there. That's way too loose. So I'm going to throw that away, buy a new one, do it over. Well, then the piece I cut off... I screwed it in this piece here, you know, our adjuster that we made. Well, it does just like that did. It will go in about that far and just stops. So the problem is in here. Problem is with that tap. So tomorrow I'm going to go to town. I'm going to try to find an M14 by one and a half uh, tap and run it through this hole. See if that don't help things out. But it ain't going to be on this video because this video is due out tomorrow. So I got to wrap her up tonight. Yes, sir. I was really hoping to get the steering completely done in this video, but it ain't happening. MLS came to visit. She visited all day long, and she visited pretty hard. I hope I don't have another day like this for a pretty good while. It was, it was a disaster. Um, we got a lot of parts, a lot of tools we're waiting on. Some, well, they were supposed to be here today. I ain't seen them. Uh, I think some are coming tomorrow. Some are coming three days from now. As uh, soon as we get them, uh, we'll start working on stuff. I'm sure I can find stuff to piddle on until we do get them. So I'll be looking for another video. Appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blur, blur.